Hello, my name's Chris Gorse. I'm here with Professor John Sturgis. And John, I believe uh, that you've uh, been writing, thinking about some of the changes to uh, uh, our views on sustainability and probably the, some of the major influences that the economy uh, and the way the world has developed had um, over how we might view sustainability uh, in some of your recent work. Um, yes, we, we've just completed um, a PhD project where the student has looked at um, how industry tackles the business of project management, but particularly how they take account of sustainability in their implementation of projects. And um, we viewed, uh, we didn't look at every sector of industry, but we looked at uh, things like mining and, and uh, oil uh, production, the raw materials if you like. We looked at manufacturing industry. Um, we looked at um, service industries and uh, um, a, a, range of, a range of different, um, different industries. And uh, um, we, we came across some quite remarkable um, instances of uh, uh, firms really becoming a lot more sustainable than they used to be. For example, the, in the mining industry, which used to be a, um, pretty poor on the sustainability front, uh, firms used to move into a site, exploit uh, the resources, and when they'd taken what they wanted, they would just walk away and leave all the spoil piled up and leave the mine shafts open and uh, any rubbish lying about and leave the place in a terrible state. Um, that can be contrasted now with uh, modern uh, industries where they come along and before they start, once they're happy that they've uh, found a site where there is exploitable minerals or whatever, they then survey the site, uh, making note of all the flora and fauna that live there uh, and if necessary, taking samples of plants and uh, things so that they can take them away and uh, grow them and preserve them with a view when the uh, resource is, is worked out to actually uh, putting the site back and um, re re putting, putting it back to the condition it was originally in. In other words, completely uh, renovating the site and leaving it in original condition. Um, so there's a lot of evidence to show that um, firms are now uh, taking sustainability on board. However, if you look at the overall picture of the planet, we, we're up to a, 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 an ecological footprint of 1.5 Earths, and that's going up. We're up to a population of 7 billion, that's still going up. Uh, the CO2 content of the atmosphere has reached 400 parts per million, and that's still rising. So clearly, um, everybody isn't uh, on this sustainability uh, trajectory at all. And uh, one of the things I've set out to do is to ask the question, why not? And uh, to examine some of the reasons for that. Yeah. In, so when I've looked at some of the findings you've got in your report, you talk about some major events and the way the world's changed, the way developed countries have changed. And what, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I know you refer back to the way that the UK was prior to the, to the, to the war. Yeah. Um, yes. The world in 1900 was, was very, very different from, from what it is today. Uh, in 1900, um, it was a world fewer than two billion people. It was a world of large empires. Uh, ruled by monarchs and kings and emperors, uh, with a with a vast gulf in wealth between the ruling class and the the ordinary uh, man in the street, as, as as far as there were men in the street at that time. Um, we now live in a world where the empires have been swept away, and um, industrial and economic development has taken place. Um, to the point where um, John Maynard Keynes' dreams in, 1930, in the 1930s of industry producing sufficient wealth so that everybody had a reasonable standard of living, um, industry has now reached that point and in fact moved far beyond it. Um, the the industry is now really engaged not in supplying people's basic needs but it, to, to keep itself in business. It's now um, 
creating needs or wants by coming up with uh, new products and advertising these and people uh, tune in and, and, and buy them. So um, we've moved beyond the situation where everybody's basic needs are covered into a, a different world altogether and the economy is its only part of the Earth's ecosystem. We take from the system what we need in terms of energy and materials, raw materials and so on, resources, and then we produce the products that, that we want to buy and to sell, and then the uh, waste material is spewed out into the uh, ecosystem um, in a way that the ecosystem increasingly finds it difficult to cope with. Up to a certain point, nature can cope, cope happily, happily with a certain rate of deposition of waste materials, but once you get beyond a certain point, then uh, the systems start to struggle, and that's the point we've reached at now. So there is, a very, there is really a, a great need um, for all of industry and everybody to do the sort of things I just mentioned with the, the mining industry and to, to bear in mind the fact that um, this planet isn't a, um, like a company with a closing down sale. It's, it's where we live and we've got to look after it. The resources have got to be uh, um, husbanded carefully and uh, uh, retained so that our dependents can, can enjoy something like the same sort of standard of living that we've had. Uh, so that, that's, one of the, that's one of the biggest um, developments. And of course in the, what we used to call the developing world, the third world, um, this, these peoples now are becoming more uh, wealthy. Um, that is having one good effect in that instead of producing 10 or 12 children, they're now realising that uh, any children they have will probably survive into adulthood, so they're not going to lose as many to uh, child of illness as they did formerly. And of course they've also realised that um, it's increasingly expensive to bring up children, so um, from looking as if the population was going to uh, increase exponentially until there was a crash um, 50 years ago, we can see that it is now the first uh, half of an S-curve which hopefully will will peak somewhere in the middle of the 21st century at around nine or perhaps nine and a half billion people. That will, will have um, a very positive effect because every um, cause of sustainability problems, uh, whatever the cause is, it's multiplied by every additional human being there is on planet Earth. The, 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 the human population is a kind of multiplier of whatever problem you want to think of. Okay, um, so we, we're still the triple bottom line, so we're still societal, economical considerations in order to understand yeah. how the human's relationship is going to interact with the planet, but we probably need to be more cognizant of, of exactly how, as a society, we work with economy and, uh, and influence factors. Um, and maybe we can discuss those possibly in more detail under the, the subjects that we're covering specifically, such as the raw material. So we'll leave that for some of the other presentations, but we, we, can, we can go on and discuss how that balance works and, and more particularly at each element uh, in some of the other lectures. Yeah. Thank you, John. Okay.